Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac. Challenge run or not, you know what, we are actually going to do a straight up vanilla run here. I'm going to random get Judas. That is a nice way to spend a Sunday morning. Uh, I will get my mouse pointer off the screen and my apologies for that. Uh, there's been a little bit of a controversy surrounding the challenge runs lately. There's two things I want to address to varying degrees. One of them is, you know, that one challenge run which was labeled salvage and I ditched the challenge run halfway through. I understand that people got a little bit perturbed about that, but never fear, especially the, the, the comments that struck me the hardest were like, well, you didn't need to make fun of the guy who suggested it just because you didn't like his challenge run. All of my comments that were meant to be in jest, and if, I think the guy's name is Don't Drop the Ice Cream. If Don't Drop the Ice Cream was legitimately offended by that, then, you know, I apologize, that's on me. Uh, but for everybody else, just know that I meant to be lighthearted with that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is there's this rumor going around uh, that I am tired of Isaac and am thus, like, on the road to stop playing it. Well, I guess literally you have to be on the road to stop playing it if, you, if you're playing it as we speak. I sadly have no bombs to do anything about that. Uh, you know, the rumors of my death of the, my enjoyment of this game are greatly exaggerated. I still enjoy playing Isaac a great deal, and again, the challenge runs and the randomness, random nature of the game at its core uh, go a long way towards making the game more enjoyable. Yet, I, I'm, I'm not sick of Isaac. I don't know where this rumor came from. Some people said, like, I've... I've Oh my god, I got killed right away. I mean, we'll just replay this as Judas. I mean, that wasn't even really my bad. I got hit once. I didn't realize the pony did so much damage. It's a shame because I love Mini Mush, actually. Uh, but yeah, there's like a rumor that I, I've gone on record as saying like the only reason I play Isaac is because people still watch it. That's not 100% wrong, uh, but it's far from 100% right. I, I love playing Isaac partly because people love watching it, but at the same time, uh, you know, I enjoy playing the game for myself as well, so it's a happy medium. It's really a perfect situation that I'm able to do a long-term series, an ultra long-term series of a game that I still enjoy and people still enjoy watching. I'm privileged that people uh, still enjoy watching me get up to some nonsense in this game, because I would probably be playing it regardless uh, of whether or not uh, there was any kind of eyeballs on this, shall we say. So hopefully that gets that administratively nips in the bud a lot of kind of weird comment threads that I've seen lately and I have no idea where they came from. It's like, you know, the seven year itch in a marriage where you start to, you know, have wandering eyes. Maybe that's what happened when we hit episode 500. People were like, ah, okay, on to the next thing. Well, the viewership doesn't really show that, uh, but maybe they thought that I was like that. I don't know, man. Again, just don't, don't think about it too hard, basically, is the advice that I would give you. I'm still here trucking along and, uh, you know, I'm happy to take as many passengers along as uh, are interested in coming. That came out weirdly. Coming with an O, not coming with a, a U and, and two M's. The, it's coming with an O, not coming with an um, I guess. Anyway, uh, we are going to continue onwards here. By the way, uh, the third administrative note, just to make sure that this the first three minutes of this episode are completely impalatable to people who are not long-term viewers. Um, keyboard noise. People have been saying Northern Line, your keyboard noise has gotten a little bit worse. Earlier today, I picked up uh, a, a microphone arm that is going to be mounted. Uh, beside my desk, as well as a shock mount, uh, which should minimize that, if not uh, entirely eliminate it. Yeah, I'll take that. It's been a good floor so far, especially with this tinted rock here. Um, so yes, ne again, never fear uh, all crises. It, it, it might always seem, you know, chicken little like the sky is falling whenever one little thing goes wrong. I encourage you to, uh, you know, think about a little bit more long term. I have your best interest in heart, and hopefully you have my best interest in heart as well. Anyway, with that aww moment out of the way, why don't we move along and play a little Binding of Isaac, shall we? We uh, have an early floor that is very large here, and sadly I do only have one key, and that's going to be a problem. Uh, but I'm trying to figure out what the best way to manage this is. So we have one key, uh, and we have a shop, but I don't have 15 cents. I have 9 cents, so I could buy like a 4 cent item and a key, which is not perfect. Uh, it's certainly not my, my ideal situation for sure. Uh, beyond that, we also have uh, two item rooms left. I don't know, we'll see how it works. We have this Eternal Heart that will turn into an HP upgrade, and this could be a huge swing, actually. If we get one or even two great items, uh, th this could put us in... I'm not going to say it's going to set us for life. It's not going to be like being one of Bill Gates' children, but, you know, it's like being the, the child of a, of a physician or something like that. you got a lot of... Uh uh, at least a few advantages over the uh, average person. So hopefully, you know, I don't mean to offend or, you know, overly inflate children of positions of which there are probably, you know, several watching this at the moment. But I'm just saying, I'm not trying to say, you know, you have to follow in your dad's footsteps. I'm just saying you have certain resources that some other people may or may not have. I'm not trying to say, you know, you're spoiled or anything. I'm just saying, you know, the infrastructure available to you that, that not everybody does. I'm not saying that I didn't either, but anyway. Let's move onwards here before I offend. 
absolutely everyone. So we're going to go down here and to the right side. Of course, it could swing the other way. I could take a ton of damage during these boss fights, lose the spirit hearts and that eternal heart, get bullshit items from our uh, item room or item rooms if I get a second key, and then just totally find myself uh, basically out on the street, possibly suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. So uh, we're, we're going to see what we can do here, but it all depends on, to a certain extent, the uh, luck of the draw and the random number generation that we get here. There's a couple rooms left <clears throat> where I could possibly get a second key. It's worth going through. I mean, we're five minutes in here and I haven't even finished... Ah, never mind. We're five minutes in here and I haven't even finished the first floor, but still. Three dollar bill! This means two things. A, that's good. B, we can't take Ipecac ever. Uh, the shears are a tempting choice. Three dollar bill also apparently gives us the magnet, which I think I knew at some point, but, uh have since forgotten, I guess, and why don't we just finish off these last few rooms here. I want to get out of the floor as, as fast as possible because I do have this Eternal Heart, which obviously I, I'm concerned about losing, uh, but at the same time, it's it's worth giving it a try to, you know, you pick up a trinket. I still don't know what Push Pain does. It might just be a straight damage upgrade, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but we might as well examine as much as we can at this point. Oh, okay, now I'm getting concerned. I've got skittish already just from getting one hit there, uh, but... Yeah, as long as we don't lose the Eternal Heart, I will consider this floor... Oh my god, now I'm concerned. Uh, I'll consider this floor a victory. Now what I probably should have done is uh, go fight one of the bosses and then, you know, get the Book of Bilal charged up. But I'm assuming that we're not going to run into the pony again. The odds of that are pretty low. Uh, so my guess is... You know, one bomb to get some more money there might be interesting. But my guess is that we will probably end up fighting some combination of Famine, Larry Jr., Duke of Flies, Monstro, and assuming that's the case, I should be able to get out of this without taking two hits, and we have Book of Belial and a Strength card, so uh, I, I can abuse both, shall we say, to make good things happen, especially if $3 bill hits us up with some good stuff here. Homing Tears, not necessarily uh, my favorite, but you know what, Monstro's an easy fight. Worst case scenario, uh, take one damage here. I would be surprised in the worst way possible if I ended up taking like two hits here, uh, but one hit against Monstro is a fair expectation. Because he always throws these shots that have, like, really weird perspectives on them. Like, I can never tell if they're above me or, like, diagonally or, like, directly uh, on a path to hit me. But anyway, we're, it's so far so good. So I can stop rambling a little bit because we are about to finish our first room here. And I'm hoping for HP upgrades because I want to turn those into deals with the devil. We also managed to... All the poop died when we finished that room, which is very strange. And now let's throw everything we've got at this boss, which is just going to be famine. Uh... And I'll pop the strength card as well. Uh, just because I want to make sure... Oh, we have freezing effect too. That's awesome. Just because I want to make sure I absolutely do not take damage on this fight. Uh, we've got to make sure that Eternal Heart gets to the next floor. So we'll pop this. He is dead. we got to deal with the devil. we got a cube of meat. And this is a moment of truth as well here. Uh, we have a quarter and guppy's tail. Neither of which are really that interesting. Was that a great first floor? No. Uh, considering all the possible advantages we had... Uh, I'd say it could have gone better, but it's probably fairly well balanced. So, uh, we're, we're stronger than we were uh, uh, when we started the game. Not vastly so, but, you know, I, I, there's a lot of things I can't complain about right now. One of which being that we are on the caves. Ooh, why was I so slow getting out there? That was very strange. Uh, but there's a lot of things I could complain about as well, like the fact that we have apparently literally zero keys, and that's going to be a problem for us moving forwards. And, you know, the, the fact that if we get Ipecac, all fucking bets are off. But, you know, I guess I'll just do my best not to take Ipecac, although I always get it confused with Chemical Peel. And I can't remember, like, for the life of me, I'm like, yeah, I can see the, um, the icon in my head right now. The icon for these items is, like, a bottle with a skull on it, but I, is that Chemical Peel or is that... You guys can understand my dilemma, I'm not sure we have to go through this for the 30th time. Uh, taking some damage, but it's not the end of the world, because already we have a ton of health as Judas, and we'll see what we get from our, uh, oh, Pestilence, this is actually awesome. Uh, this pr puts a hope in my head that we will be able to, uh, get our third or fourth level cube of meat. It really doesn't matter to me whether it's third or fourth, fourth would obviously be better, uh, but third is A-OK -okay too. And you know, even if we stay at the second, it's a pretty nice companion. It's nice just to have some company in this, uh, you know, long, cold, lonely nights that we get here down in the caves and the catacombs and so on and so forth. We do want to explore the entirety of this floor because I really would be remiss if I left here without picking up another item. Getting a, or basically getting like a brother Bobby or a sister Maggie from this, which is not bad, but I would feel bad if that was all we got from this floor in total. Well, I mean, I guess we got the spirit heart as well, but we can't really count consumables in that. Otherwise, the ledger for like the pluses and minuses at the end of every floor would be enormous. If I had two bombs, we could possibly get the uh, item room without uh, using a key, assuming the secret room is next to it, but we can't really bank on that, can we? So we, we've got to do our um, 
you know, standard due diligence. It's a, it's fine to skip an item room if you don't have a key, uh, but if you didn't even go through the effort to see if there was a key on the floor, that's where uh, I think I feel like the commenters will strike down with righteous anger those who threaten to spoil and poison my brother. I sorry, we did the Pulp Fiction read through recently, and uh, that quote probably butchered it immensely. But regardless, I had a lot of fun with that. So let's see what we've got going up here. Uh, lemon mishap. All right, again. If it's a shitty item room, at least I took the chance to try. So, let us go down to the next floor. Uh, you know, let's just ignore the elephant in the room, which is me not trying to get a key to go to the shop. And for two bombs, I can pick up three bombs. That sounds like a deal and a half. It should be like, hi, Billy Mays here. Sorry, Billy Mays here. That's a little bit better. Here to offer you the deal of a lifetime. Sorry, I can't sustain my Billy Mays voice. Uh, it just wasn't meant to be. I tried to get into infomercials, you know. Uh, Critical beat me to it. What can I say? The guy's got a, a, a voice for selling, man. People just trust it immediately. Whereas me, I've got to work for it. i got to throw all sorts of crazy words in and sing a Foo Fighters song. You never know, man. Uh, so we are going to fight these guys. Uh, I'm going to hopefully... Uh, it's Caves Part 2. Okay, I was uh, for a second I was like, I'm concerned because it could be catacombs, but it's not. So as long as we can start working our way through these guys. I really want some base damage increase as Kane, or sorry, as Judas. Uh, that is my number one priority, but again, it, you kind of don't really have much choice in the matter unless we run across a deal with the devil, at which point uh, Mom's Knife for Brimstone is a shoe in at this point. Oh my god, stop giving me items I can't use! The laser is useless! It's the opposite of the radioactive man quote from Rainier Wolfcastle. I guess he wasn't really, when the, when he said the goggles do nothing, he wasn't really radioactive man, he was actually like a man whose eyes were, were burning and, you know, that, that's real emotion right there. You, can, you can't coach that at Juilliard. Uh, again, like, you can tell, like, I'm, I'm aching for damage at this point because we are not really, uh, doing too much to these enemies. In fact, when we don't freeze them, it takes me, like, two passes to even kill them. Uh, we will use a bomb here, which will give us, hopefully, small rock. Uh, single spirit art, it could be worse. Uh, we could have gotten a golden chest or something that we couldn't even use there. Uh, and I'm starting to feel like we're, uh, we're up against it. I mean, we're not in a bad position. Uh, and the, the problem is that our, our luck, or our, our ability to defeat bosses as we get into the late game hinges far too much on luck right now because we have to um, hope that we get a good three dollar bill tier effect uh, whenever we fight like an Isaac or Blue Baby. We've got to hope basically that we get the, uh, the slowing or the freezing effect. Oh my god that was a one in a million shot doc. Well apparently a two in a million shot. Uh, but if we don't, then we've got uh, serious problems on our hands. Like if we end up getting Lemon Mishap on one of those boss fights, could be more harm than good. Uh, but, you know, the, the chances of us dying in the near future are pretty low, I would say. We will get a Spirit Heart from LJ here. Not LJN, hopefully. Although, you know, Fester's Quest, man. Next Let's Play, guaranteed. Not actually true. People are going to be like, I'm going to hold you to that motherfucker. No, you're not. What are you going to do? Come fight me in my house, man. Uh, I don't want to do this, but in the interest of being smart, I am going to backtrack, try to find another key, and hopefully go to the shop as well, because I've been speeding through a little bit, and, you know, this has a tendency to, short term, it releases those endorphins, right? It makes you feel good, you're going fast, and you're like, oh, I'm the master of the Binding of Isaac, not that I ever feel that way. Um, but long term, uh, it, can, it can really screw with your chances. Kind of like drugs, if you will. It's not that I would know. Uh, seriously, that wasn't like me being like, not like I would know, right kids? Remember those times we had in the early 2000s? It's more like, not like I would know. Because I was never that cool. And I guess, you know, that's also not my way of saying, doing drugs is cool. That's my way of saying, like, you know, you can trust Uncle Ryan. He's not trying to pull the wool over your eyes here. Well, I guess we can at least play the Blood Bank a couple of times here. Because we do have a heart just sitting there. Maybe we'll get lucky. And, uh, snag two cents. That's exactly how I was going to finish that sentence. Never fear. Absolutely worth picking up Mom's purse, and uh, you know what? I think that key is worth the purchase as well. You never know when we'll get a good chance to use that. You know what? We can actually play it two more times because there's another heart available. Oh, hey! nice, smart thinking, right? You guys thought that was luck, but actually, I tapped deep into the code. I've got my Hugh Jackman, a uh, huge, more like huge asshole. No, I've got my Hugh Jackman, uh, you know, dual monitors. Who needs that, man? I've got six monitors here. I'm trying to reconstruct the cube out of cubes, like in Swordfish. Which is remarkably similar to how hacking actually is. Don't let anybody who quote unquote really hacks tell you differently. Uh, so we're gonna be fighting Peep. Should be an easier fight now. We did get a uh, speed. Oh, uh, that's the worst dodge ever. We will get a, or we did get a speed and uh, health increase by way of the blood bag, of course. And with Book of Belial, we're doing some pretty serious damage. Peep is an annoying fight, but uh, it certainly could be a lot worse. Not one of the harder enemies we could fight here. Eh, maybe, maybe not. In any case, we picked up three HP upgrades on this floor before it's all said and done. 
Uh, and we'll see what we get in this tinted rock. Man, seriously, just give me the small rock so I can stop having my hopes crushed every single time I blow one of you up. Uh, having my hopes crushed every single time I blow one of you. The story of your mom. So we are going to play cool on this room. Oh, now we're going to get hit on this room. That's what I meant to say, actually. You know, in some ways, the coolest thing of all is getting hit. Because it shows that you have the, the confidence and resources to survive it. Take that to the blood bank. Center to Trent. Uh, we are going to kill these guys move on to the next room I got two keys so for once I'm a little bit key rich sorry key bereft no shout out in this video well that was a weird little meta joke there wasn't it let's come down here to the bottom left and knock him off and then move onwards I have a, a you had good map control well not map control but uh, good map luck so far in this episode I, I've been able to fairly accurately and consistently pinpoint exactly where I want to go oh yeah <laughs> lightning struck twice there we managed to not take damage uh, much to my surprise but yeah, I've been finding the shop in the item room pretty quickly. Problem is, uh, on this floor, we don't really need to find the shop unless I can also find the secret room. Uh, and then it's becoming increasingly unlikely the more and more floors we go to. So, somehow, I'm... Oh my god. You watch that shit in instant replay. There were like 40 shots that just danced around this guy like he was fucking Neo. Uh, and we're gonna be fighting Gish, and that's good, actually. So, you know, the elephant in the room uh, is that I do have this Emperor card. And obviously I want to make good use of this, but uh, when does that good use happen? Because uh, I'm starting to think that Isaac is still looking like a pipe dream. By the way, there's a certain contingency of people out there that are like, Northern Line, we just want to see you beat the game. Like, I don't care if the run is as overpowered as it could possibly be, we just want to see you beat it. Like, if you want to do that, by the way, if you want to, you want to see me beat it, you're gross. But um, if you just want to see me beat the game, there are hundreds of episodes where you can do that. And, you know, go back. I'm sure you've missed one of them. There's probably like... 0.1% of the people watching this, 0.1%, sorry, have seen all of the 504-ish episodes of The Binding of Isaac so far, so feel free to go back and watch one where I was super overpowered. I don't begrudge your interest, I'm not writing those off, but what I am saying is, you know, there is fresh content in that vein, at least fresh to you, in all likelihood. I'm doing these new challenge runs to put something novel into the business. If you're watching these to see high-level Isaac play where I have, like, a good chance of beating the game, uh, I hate to steer you away, but you might sort of be in the wrong place. By the way, my keyboard died there, I swear to God. That one was totally my fault, but <laughs> the first time when I just stood still, my keyboard uh, hit a, a rut or something. Um, but yeah, if you're watching this to be like, it, it, well, you know, it, it's weird for me to say, because I think there's a certain contingency of people who watch these from like an art cringe standpoint. They're like, oh, Northern Line, you shouldn't have done that, you should have done something differently, and this is hard to watch. That's cool, man. I watch videos of, you know, like, kids' talent shows where, like, ten-year-olds have their dreams crushed, like, doing ventriloquism on stage and stuff like that. I can't judge you. All I'm trying to say is, you know, A, I'm in on the joke and I hope that ruins it for you a little bit, uh, and B, uh, you know, you're kind of coming to the wrong place if you want to see some high-level Isaac players. There's plenty of high-level Isaac players on Twitch and YouTube. I'm not necessarily one of them. I'm not necessarily not one of them. You know, I've accomplished some good stuff in this game, but at the same time, uh, you know, consider where you're getting the source of your content here. Uh, and that Einstein quote, you know, insanity is watching the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I gotta take a quick coughing break, uh, and a wheezing break, potentially. Uh, I'm actually not sick, I'm just gonna go play some Pokemon Red. <coughs> just kidding, I am a little bit sick. It's the kind of thing where, you, you know, 18 minutes into a video, you get a little tickle at the back of your throat, but, uh, better than getting a little tickle at the back of your throat. Am I right, Method Man? That's right, Northern Lion. That might have been racist. I actually don't know what Method Man sounds like in his regular speaking voice. Uh, but let's keep rolling backwards here, uh, and we'll use our bomb to get over here, assuming I didn't blow it up the wrong way, which I didn't. Bloody Penny might have been an interesting pickup here, but we, uh, still kind of rolling like Fred Durst along, uh, as we get ready to go to the item room. I mean, that's the whole reason we're here. I, I've had pretty shitty item rooms, actually. Three dollar bill was almost certainly by far the best one we've gotten. Uh, and I really need something to take us to the next level, because at this point, uh, we're just not quite near where we need to be if we're going to have a good chance of getting through the rest of the game. Now, the one thing that could change this, oh, I was going to say, the one thing that could change this is if we fought um, War and then got the third level Meat Boy, but we didn't fight War and we didn't get third level Meat Boy. That pill is a range upgrade, though, so that's something. If we get Mom's Knife, that is a damage increase as well. But, um, yeah, we the ward train has sailed essentially so uh we don't have too much uh you know hope of that happening we can still get a third level meat boy i think a fourth one is impossible unless we get like the world's worst judgment like if judgment just gave me a random cube of meat i guess in this situation you'd be like the world's best judgment but uh we get the magnet which uh, is weird because sometimes that already applies its own effect with uh three dollar bill the tarot card interests me but perhaps not enough and you know what with five bombs i think we're in the position where we can look for the secret room at this point uh and maybe i missed some stuff 
that I can get on the way back by way of the magnet. I don't know, man. We have enough money now to make the shop worthwhile, so I will blow a key looking at that. We sadly have no golden chest. I'm just doing some recon at the, the end of this floor because, you know, we're going into the depths part two right now, or after we finish, or maybe even Necropolis. Things get a little tougher. We, we gotta be prepared. Magnet is, uh, well, I'm not gonna say it's paying for itself because I really... <laughs> it is giving us more than we spent to get it because we only spent a key to get it, but at the same time, uh, it's not giving us as much as I wanted. So this is definitely a, a room where uh, I think it's justifiable to use Book of the Lyle. I mean, it's not like we're going to fight Mom right away on the next floor anyway. I want to make sure I go to at least the item room uh, and likely the shop as well, assuming we have enough keys. We do have two keys, but who knows? Maybe I get a good golden chest or something. All right. Well, never mind. We're definitely going to be doing it. So at 24 cents, the shop on the next floor could be big. Blue Candle would be uh, probably the only shop item I would consider... I'm an idiot. I'm the worst idiot in the world, actually. It doesn't make a functional difference, and I'm glad I remembered this before I, like, left Bloody Penny, but I totally forgot that we bought Mom's purse. Uh, so, hopefully, you know... I, I love when that happens when you make a mistake, and then it doesn't really have a huge impact, and then you go back and remedy it before it causes any major problems. Because then people who have already, like, hastily left an angry comment probably feel pretty dumb. And uh, that makes me feel good, because commenters on a regular basis make me feel dumb. This is not me having some kind of, like, fan-loathing or anything like that. Just fan-loathing for people who are kind of dicks sometimes. So, you know, good-natured dicks, but dicks nonetheless. It's like if a friend was like, hey, you missed a spot there, and then, you know, promptly afterwards, uh, they got hit in the face with a falling jet engine or something like that. I'm just saying, you know, there's a little bit of, um, you know, what's that, that German word for taking pleasure in the, the pain of others? Like schadenfreude, something like that? Yeah, uh, that's exactly what this is right here. Of course, you know, th then there might be some dramatic irony, because maybe I am, uh, I'm, I have remedied that mistake, but maybe there's a much larger mistake that is still uh, hanging over my head right now, making me sound like an idiot uh, in my hubris right now. This has been Northern Lion's shitty uh, literary devices hour. Half hour, I suppose, at this point. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. That was actually an easy fight. You know, I, I think we're doing a, a lot better. Uh, the battery is a, a no-brainer purchase, of course, as is the key, and at this point, you know, why not just pay a little extra and get that full health, uh, peace of mind as well. Uh, are we ready to beat Mom? Yes. Uh, it seems weird because I'm recording this on Mother's Day. Now I wish I hadn't spent so much money because Judgment might not pay out with, uh, the amount of money. Oh, of course he gives me the same thing for literally one cent less. We'll be back for you, Judgment, assuming we get more cash. Well... We, we have to do backtracking on this entire floor. I can't just go fight Mom right now uh, and use the Book of Belial because we won't be able to use it. Or we won't be able to leave. That'll be an issue. Uh, more money, please. I mean, of course, why would I buy that heart? Now that I think about it, it's like, it's so obvious that hearts are going to show up later. But, you know, again, hindsight is twenty twenty. when you play the Binding of Isaac. You can never be 100% sure what will uh, befall you in the future. So, uh, six bombs, six keys, that, that's decent enough moving forward. It's not quite where I would want to be, but it's not terrible. Um, what else do we have beyond that? Base damage plus whatever $3 bill occasionally gives us. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, it, it seems like we've gotten the weirdest, like, item... Or items from bosses so far. Because it, it feels like it hasn't really functionally improved us all that much. We've gotten a few HP upgrades, two cubes of meat, and a little gish. And I think that's it. We have, like, no other statistical upgrades to speak of. I got an HP upgrade from Blood Bag. I got an Eternal Heart. But it's, it's been a very strange run, uh, to be sure. Well, you know, that's actually pretty good, getting the speed and range up upgrade from uh, Roid Rage. Could be better. Would have preferred growth hormones. But, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. All the time, at least. Uh, and I'm, right now, I'm, I'm scavenging for extra money. Even though Judgment is only likely to give me HP upgrades, uh, it's worth it at this point. And, you know, if I can find more money, if I can find the secret room... I might be able to swing a sweet gambit and uh, go, you know, fight in the boss trap room by finding an arcade. Uh, but again, that's a, a risk that I might not be willing to take. Seems like the boss trap room is like squeezy central. Like, you're very, very likely to get squeezy in those rooms. Uh, let us... I'm, oh, that was really bad damage. But I mean, you know, I've got a lot of parameters to focus on at the same time. This is only the depths, man. It's kind of a tough room here. Uh, I, I should take a bloody penny and... The Polaroid down to the next floor, I think. Uh, don't get me wrong, Pushpin is something. Maybe it's done well for us. I can't believe I didn't take damage there. Um, I, I, again, I don't really know what Pushpin does, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused on that. Uh, but Bloody Penny has the potential to keep us alive, uh, so that seems like a much smarter play. I'm pretty surprised that we've only gotten one cent. Uh, I guess I will do some looking for the secret room as we come through here. Uh, there's like two or three possible locations for it that I can see. Uh, and keys galore now. 
Luckily, we didn't get these earlier. It would have spoiled me. So, we have Sloth that is going to give us a tarot card. So, I don't really know. Maybe we get the Justice tarot card and we get a, a few resources out of that. Otherwise, uh, we're going to hope that this Judgment just pays out with a uh, single cent. Or with uh, the single cent that we have. I hope he doesn't pay out with a single cent or that's going to cause some problems for us. Maybe. So, uh, well, you know, we are going to look for the Secret Room as well. With seven bombs, we might as well toss one here uh, just so we don't have to backtrack too much. Sadly, no. We'll check this one at the top then. This one will also, will also allow us to bomb our way into the boss trap room, which would be convenient, but sadly, no. Uh, we will check under here, which is another... Oh, just kick it over a little bit. Okay, well, that was actually well placed. And, of course, we just get a slot machine, which is unlikely to be worth playing at this point. All right, so I would say it is time for the mom boss fight. We've actually made pretty good time, uh, all things considered. It certainly could have been slower. Uh, so the shop has nothing of value for us. I really, at this point, wish I did not spend so much money... Uh, on the... No, I don't want the heart yet. Just in case I make a mistake and walk over the spikes. Alright, well, it ended up working out pretty well regardless. Alright, let, let's make it happen. We got the mom fight here. But yes, like I said, we, we've actually managed to go pretty quickly. I know I have to pop a couple aisle. I always get paranoid. I want to pop it when there's no enemies around. Uh, just in case it causes me to Zelda and, and screw myself over a little bit. But again, I, I imagine this is going to be a pretty easy fight. Vanilla mom on Mother's Day seems like a right call for the random number generation from the game. Because you should be buying your mom some uh, vanilla ice cream today, you know? At the very least. I just sent my mom an email because I'm a big shot. No, that's not true. I took her out for a nice steak dinner from across the country. Uh, obviously, that's not true either. I'm living in my own fantasy world trying to make myself feel better. I love you, mom. Unless you are one of the angry commenters that I mentioned earlier, in which case, go fuck yourself. Now, uh, we are almost done with this. One or two more hits should do it. And we get a range upgrade, which is probably... Uh, one of the worst things that I can get right now, maybe next to Pageant Boy, but, you know, here we are. We've got six hearts, decent damage, and we're going to try to make our way in the world today. Obviously, our number one priority, and again, it's not really a priority. It's a kind of an inaccurate way of saying it, because we don't have choice in the matter. Uh, but our number one most beloved item of 2012 or 2013, I suppose, would be... Uh, if we were able to pick up a third cube of meat here, which would give me a huge benefit moving forward. Kind of a negative when fighting Isaac, but, uh, you know, the, the positives outweigh the negatives, so I guess it is a net positive in the end. Now, we, we have a lot of gaps in this game uh, that I normally consider, if not essential, at the very least, incredibly useful for dealing with uh, late game in Isaac. Uh, we don't have the compass, we don't have the map, we don't have great damage. Uh, we don't have flying, we don't have any sort of form of uh, piercing shots or any way of hitting multiple enemies at once. Uh, we do have the battery, and, and we do have uh, Book of Belial as well, but uh, there's shortcomings on this run. There's, there's no getting around that. Um, you know, if, we're, if we win this one, this will be an underdog victory. This, they'll make this into a movie. Uh, I'm envisioning myself as maybe like a Mark Wahlberg, but with better abs kind of character. Um, you know, maybe like... Uh, Mr. Olympia, Mark Wahlberg, if we could invent ab transplant and take out his six-pack and replace it with just like a better six-pack, uh, that would that would be fine. Uh, and, and Isaac, the game itself, could be maybe played by Kevin Spacey doing the voice. He was pretty good in Moon, so uh, I, I feel like he's got a lock on the part if he wants it, and who am I kidding? Of course he does. Uh, sadly, we've reached a dead end here. This is going to be the moment. This is going to be where like Mark Wahlberg with better abs is going to turn to... Um, Kevin Spacey's gonna be laughing maniacally, and he's gonna turn to his love interest, perhaps played by every lady ever, and he's gonna be like, I don't know if I can do this, and she's gonna be like, trust in yourself, and the power of love, and then he's just gonna do it. Except, I'm imagining by the end of this, I am actually gonna see myself in a bad position here. Maybe played by more of a downtrodden Philip Seymour Hoffman type, which is probably more accurate to begin with. That was a surprisingly articulate rant about literally nothing at all, which is something I should maybe use as like a channel description. Surprising articulations about nonsense, the Northern Lion story. That's like the literal Northern Lion story. That and, you know, mediocrity. But let's uh, ignore that because it's giving me the, the no feeling, not in the Uncle Jerry way, but in the existential crisis way. And uh, hopefully we won't take any more damage. Maggie's Faith, interesting. Maggie's Faith Polaroid, is that more valuable than Bloody Penny at this point? I, I think no. Uh, I know that's going to seem crazy, but we're kind of at the point where if we had a graph between the value of health upgrades and the value of like rend uh, consumable red hearts, uh, the red hearts in the early game are much less valuable because A, they come by all the time, and if you can get a lot of uh, heart containers early in the game, that can stack up well and you know give you a very good chance of victory later. Uh, but I think at the point that we're at, if I could take three, I would take you, Maggie's Faith, I promise. But I think we're at the point where, um, you know, Eternal Hearts are less valuable than the Red Hearts that they kind of replace in this situation. So, 
uh, you know, these, these can keep us alive, so let's roll with these instead. That's that's my philosophy. To, to boil it down to a Cliff Note style uh, digestible package. Red hearts equal life. I like life. Let's try to continue living. Uh, that seems like a perfect quote for the, that's the way Dad did it, that's the way America does it, etc., etc. Uh, but now I've, I, again, meted myself out of that as well. Uh, we are getting close to full health here. Utero 1 is, is not an easy floor. Obviously, you know, we've got some problems here. I really should be using Book of Belial more often. I've noted that as a, um, a, a very prominent flaw in my Isaac play that I, I, I suffer greatly from you know, chronic too-good-to-use syndrome. And that's not... I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, maybe not consciously, but I'm saying that I'm working on it to get you people off my back. Uh, and again, I feel like, sadly, I need to make the... Uh, the disclaimer there that that was a joke, and I love you all, or at least most of you, especially my mom, she is indeed watching this. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I should be using Book of Belial more often, but uh, every room I get to, I'm like, you know, not this one, maybe next one. Not this one, maybe the next one. Uh, and I really should have been using it more than just for bosses since, like, the depths, at least, maybe even the caves, but... Uh, sure, pick up a spirit heart, continue moving onwards, we've reached another dead end, I didn't even see that guts dude there. Uh, but of course you've reached a dead end, because that's the, the kind of run this has been. Uh, you know, I, I had good map awareness or good luck with the map at the start, but uh, it's kind of falling apart right now. And the depressing thing, or the, the distressing thing, I feel like I'm accidentally formulating a rap or something right now. Uh, but we, we have a, a huge area there on the right side where, oh, this is great. Please, oh my god, did you really only give me half of a red heart for like the eight cents I picked up there? Um... But we have a huge, like, swath of bare, virgin, untamed land on the right side there, and that worries me. You know what? We, we should start, put our money where our mouth is. Uh, this room's not the toughest. It's not the baddest of them all. Krispy Kreme wouldn't write any songs about this. Well, he wouldn't write any songs about it. things that were not himself or Motherfucker Mike, anyway. Sorry, Moneymaker Mike, whatever. Motherfucker Mike is an AVGN thing, I think. Uh, but, uh, whatever. The room's done. The, the tirade is over. Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. I, you know, this is a good time for an anecdote. You know, the first movie I ever saw in theaters was uh, The Addams Family. I believe that was like 1992, so I was like four years old. And it starts with the, you know, the anthropomorphic hand that kind of runs across the screen. And uh, I didn't realize, you know, like the people when they saw that train movie, the, like the first film that ever screened in theaters or whatever, and there was like a train lumbering at them and they all got out of the way and screened. It was like that for me. I was like, oh, don't hurt me, I'm, you're a monster. And my dad was like, God, my kid is fucking retarded. Probably. That's not what he told me. He told me it was a very cute moment, but, uh, you know, I'm just going by what I would think if that moment happened to me. And so whenever people are like, wow, people 200 years ago were so stupid when they saw that train, they actually thought it wasn't on the screen, they thought it was real. Man, when you have no concept for that kind of stuff, that's exactly how that works out. Dude, think about the first movie you saw as a kid. Uh, assuming you were relatively young, you probably acted like a goddamn idiot as well. People need to have more, more leniency when it comes to other people, man. Everyone's got their own problems and their own mindsets. Uh, we got very lucky with this boss fight, by the way. Uh, maybe not with the uh, the person that we're fighting against, because that's not super easy. He might drop a cube of meat, though. It happens from time to time, I swear to God. Likely to drop the white pony, which is going to be worthless for us, but, um, fuck. <laughs> uh, but we got very lucky that we got the freezing effect, the mom's contact effect, and we will definitely take Spirit of the Night. Um, yes, we got very lucky that we got the mom's contact effect, which, uh made that fight ten times easier than it had any right to be. So, that was a long floor, uh, and not a particularly good floor. Uh, but we did get uh, the Spirit of the Night, which is going to give us a much better chance defensively moving forward. Although now, of course, uh, we have more shortcomings when it comes to, excuse me, when it comes to our health. Although, recall that it probably doesn't really matter that much. Uh, it's not like having six heart containers probably would have saved us at any point. This is more more likely a, a situation where uh, these advantages are well worth it. Sure, arcade's interesting, uh, but it's unlikely that I'm going to play it unless I manage to get an F ton of uh, other random upgrades. I could just walk this dude in the spikes. I don't think it's worth the key to do it. I should kill the brain and then just kind of walk over to him and do it this way. I can't believe I didn't get hit there somehow. Maybe you can't get hit uh, in that manner. Uh, but anyway, let us continue doing this, and the brain dude will be dead any second now. Anytime we get a slow or a freeze, and I think we can get the little dish effect. That was awesome that we managed to uh, get... Uh, oh, I didn't even see that coming. But it's awesome that we got uh, the uh, freezing effect on this room. 
Anyway, just give this a second here. We're going to be fighting Mom's Heart. I think it's going to be easy. Run slowed down a little bit, uh, but it'll pick up once we get to the Cathedral. And we might have a chance on the Cathedral. We might not, but we might. I mean, mathematically, we don't have a 0% chance of success. Or, nor do we have a 100% chance of failure. So I, I feel like we're still in this here. Especially with uh, 10 bombs, the Mom's Heart boss fight should be easy. Especially if we keep getting bomb flies like that. Uh, I'd need to pop Book of Bilal because I'm a big fool. Uh, and you remember, we have this Emperor card. You may have forgotten that uh, over the course of the 34 minutes that have passed, or you know, probably like 28 minutes that have passed since I picked it up, but this Emperor card is actually a huge asset, kind of like Hugh Jackman, but, you know, better. I know, sorry, I, I'll take that back, Mr. Jackman. You are a pretty magnificent specimen. Uh, but we, uh, we have a chance. We have five hits on the... Uh, Isaac fight, uh, assuming we don't get hit at all in the rest of this fight. We have at least four, because I'm going to get some extra health back. That was really silly of me. Oh, the bomb almost got there, but, uh, yeah, we have at least four hits on that Isaac fight. Ooh, we won't have Book of Belial. That's going to be interesting. We, we actually will have Book of Belial, uh, but it might not be there right when the fight starts. That's going to make things uh, very, very interesting, I think. Unless, if we get one more charge on it in the middle of this Mom's Hard Boss fight, uh, we should be able to get our... Um, our Book of Belial charged. Otherwise, it'll take like 10 seconds into the Isaac fight, which actually, it's probably worth it to not have to deal with another room. That's my expectation anyway. And we didn't get hit, so you know what? Yes, so let's go on to our uh, Isaac room here. Uh, and it, let's make this happen. I'm not necessarily holding out a ton of hope, uh, but at the same time, if we get through this, we have 10 keys and anything can happen on the chest. By the way, thank you to everyone who pointed out uh, this Book of Belial. Uh, oh, we got the freezing effect on this room. We can make this happen. It's still not automatic. It's closer to automatic. Uh, but he's still going to be firing a lot of shots when we don't manage to freeze him, which is going to be uh, the, the parts where this run is going to become substantially more difficult. Especially, like, it's great when I can get, like, a sustained period of hitting him here, uh, but if, if I ever have to dodge, uh, then my shots stop hitting him, and it creates kind of a, a negative feedback loop that I don't want, where uh, I'm not hitting him as much, which means there's less likely... Uh, chances for me to freeze him. He has now turned invisible. Uh, he's half dead, and I'm only one-fifth dead, so I think this is going pretty well so far. Again, our success entirely hinges on the luck of getting uh, the right kind of $3 bill effect, uh, but when we do, man, it, it turns out pretty well for us. We are already on third phase of Isaac. He's 66% uh, dead, if not more, and I am only 40% uh, dead, so that's good, I think. I'm not a math genius, but I'm pretty sure that's better for us than it is for him. Uh, now we've been hit again. Every time I get hit, try to do a little extra damage. Oh my god, I got hit twice there and I died! Holy shit, how did it fall apart so close to the end? One thing's for sure, if I didn't have the freezing effect, that would have been done. But in any case, I hope you had a, a tension-filled and excitement-filled run there. I enjoyed it a lot, and I'm going to do another vanilla run next, too, to try to... It'll be the pickled ginger of a sushi dinner, if you will, or the palate cleanser, the rice cracker... Uh, that washes the taste of that challenge run out of your mouth if you didn't enjoy it. As always, thanks for everyone for watching. Continue suggesting your challenge runs. And again, I would like to encourage you to vote for those challenge runs to make sure that they are visible to me. As always, thanks to everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.